Night Phoenix. And his opponent down here in the bottom left. From Germany, it's showtime. Night Phoenix, by the way, tweeting this morning that he joined a new team called Ooh. Astronaut Esports, which ah. is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Astronaut Esports? Astronaut Esports, yeah. I was also not familiar with their name yet, but he tweeted about it this morning, so uh, I would imagine, indeed, that he has made the switch. Yeah, I, I, I would... Damn, that, okay, that's kind of neat. Yeah, Sorry, so is they it... tweeted, we're extremely excited to, uh, yeah, apparently jump into RTS games. Oh. Cool. Neat. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, good luck. Good luck tonight, Phoenix. Uh, he had Absolutely. some pretty pretty fun games in the qualifiers. Got a chance to to check out some of his play. I think I think he won his qualifying match handily, but it was after I think it was in like the lower bracket. Okay. I'm a little bit foggy. I covered a lot of games and there's so many like you said there are so many european protosses <laughs> yeah uh, Ooh, night phoenix tried to get the kill right there on the probe the scouting work from showtime but he didn't get it he pulled a bunch of probes from his own mineral line oh. to try and chase it down but mental damage yeah well honestly i think uh showtime will be pretty happy about that yeah that's what i'm saying he's, he's, <laughs> he's gonna be able to inflict some mental damage it uh, feels feels real bad when you uh you go for a move like that and then your opponent just like sidesteps you twitch chat prediction by the way two percent of the points going in favor of night phoenix so Ooh. showtime uh the clear favorite that is uh a 50 to one on i mean that's <laughs> that's not bad honestly I, I can see it happening i mean that's good enough odds to like yeah. that's smart channel point money you know yeah yeah esports dollars i think is what they're called in this channel right? <laughs> i love it Honestly, so much fun, actually. It's, it's, yeah. It's good. Good, uh, methodology. Alrighty, so both players trying to expand. Ultimately, the Nexus is going to be a little bit quicker right here for Showtime. Now, Showtime, of course, has been a household name on the European server for such a long time. He's known as the Mauer. Very good when it comes to playing that defensive style. So, not even, uh, I'm not surprised right here to see him taking that expansion before the opponent. As Night Phoenix actually mostly just posturing with that expansion for the time being. Okay, he will be taking it here eventually, but decided to go into that quicker Twilight Council. Yeah, this really did look like, um, for me, for a moment, I was like, he's going to blink Stalker all in. That's, that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, nope, not going to be the case. Uh, man, those sentries, they're so jacked. They're so strong. <laughs> like, They've been I'm, doing push-ups, man. Yeah. They spent the entire winter break just... Doing some push-ups and bulking up, and they're actually putting in a punch. Yeah, they are. Uh, now they used to be the ones. They they like they're the ones that got like bullied in high school. <laughs> but then they like they had their glow up, and now they're the like the guy that you, like the guy that uh, she tells you not to worry about or whatever. Like they are just so strong <laughs> these days in they PvP. They do feel like substantially beefier now in this matchup. It's funny because the changes are really quite small all things considered but they really don't die nearly as quickly and it's not surprising to see showtime of all players make active use of it and look at them go a little tickle beam no longer now i wonder if he's overextending a little bit though because those are still stalkers yeah and once the shields are down those sentries you know the clock hits midnight and they turn back into pumpkins again <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> they are suddenly not as strong as they yeah. perceived to be, man. It's all fake muscle. Yeah, exactly. It looks real nice, but like it's it's all tone, no uh, no power. But regardless, Night Phoenix is still very much behind because his Nexus is so much later. Showtime is up seven workers right now. The only advantage Night Phoenix has, and it is a, de a decent one, is the faster blink. But mm. Showtime's blink is like. Yeah, it's it's only 20 seconds behind. Can Night Phoenix realistically do what he'll need to do? Very nice force field to break up the concave. Battery overcharge is going to get popped. And yeah, this Great stuff. That's that's a textbook defense from D Mauer. Yeah, very nicely handled right there by Showtime for now. And you brought it up. There's that blink. 
Really only one attack wave right here where Night Phoenix had the overwhelming tech advantage right now. Well, that similar tool is going to be available. Aggressive playing forward, though, from Showtime. Maybe getting a little over eager. But he's already gone into a third Nexus, too. So he actually mined out those skinny golden mineral fields to go up towards this base on the left side. Which is uh, one of the cool features of Crimson Court. You don't actually have to show your opponent. Now, Night Phoenix has figured out that something is a little off. So he does find the base here eventually. But he needs to be careful, because now Blink oh. is going to be on cooldown. Yeah, and that's a couple stalkers. Huh? One actually only going down there in the end. Showtime is going to be on cooldown. Oh, he might be able to get more. Oh, oh yeah. he got, I think he got two more. Yes, he yep. did. That's three for zero. And Night Phoenix is just continuing to commit to Blink Stalkers off two bases while Showtime is adding on tech. He's adding on probes. He's continuing, like he, he's actually, Night Phoenix is going all in on just Stalkers and mm -hmm. Showtime is keeping pace with him while, while doing more. Absolutely. The push continues right here for Night Phoenix. He's effectively turning this into a two-base all-in. Problem is that it's so difficult to overwhelm Showtime, really in any game, honestly, period. He's just so good when it comes to defending and staying alive and never really uh, yeah, being broken here. So he's going into a forge. At this rate, Showtime will probably not need a forge as he's just blinking back and forth. There's still no third Nexus here for Night Phoenix, so... The longer that this goes on, the more that economical advantage for Showtime will kick in, and ultimately the more units he will end up with compared to his opponent. So these trades have been nice. Already, actually, they have been in favor of Showtime. And Night Phoenix needs to get something done, and he needs to get it done quickly. That he does, and it's not going to be a very long timing. There are more Stalkers here for Night Phoenix. Battery Overcharge will get taken down, but that's a lot of lost DPS. Ah, uh, still Showtime. He might have overprobed, and this is a yeah. great concave for Night Phoenix. He's way down in workers, Night Phoenix that is, but Showtime, I mean, if you lose the Stalker War, it doesn't matter what the, the worker count is per se. That's a very bold blink forward, but I think it's close enough to even trades. Yeah, it's it's definitely, yeah, they're, they're dead even on Stalkers right now. The main thing for Showtime is that he didn't add additional gateways, so he couldn't make use yeah. of his actual benefit here he did get an immortal but like look at this look at the economy right now it's insane. he's going for what seems to be another nexus or at least he's considering it in the top left -hand corner i think showtime really just needs to get his money down and make some army yeah another nexus is the last thing we needed i actually thought that he shouldn't really be probing anymore because he's been making a lot of them workers but even after losing quite a few of those uh, those probes he Still is so far ahead with the worker count. Now Night Phoenix Ooh. is going into the main base. New gateways will be forced out because of it, though. So maybe that will be, in the end, uh, Showtime saving grace. But right now, he doesn't have a lot of production. Yeah, depowering uh, the, the production for Demower is a big problem right there. Fortunately, Showtime's so quick on the rebuild of that pylon. He was, he was right on top of that. Night Phoenix is still making this look scary. But I think Showtime with an Immortal out, with those gateways getting repowered, and now three yeah. more finishing, I think Showtime is going to be able to finally shut this down. I, yeah. It's very clear to me that Showtime thinks that Night Phoenix is on three bases. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, we're now even at that awkward point where in like a minute from now, Night Phoenix's main base is going to yeah. start running low. Because this all-in has been going on for such a long while, so he is really going to fizzle out very soon. He needs to get... Yeah, units going here. So Showtime is making the assumption that there is yeah. a, a third base. There's no way. Like, there is a third Nexus coming right now. It just started up. Uh, Cybercore goes down. You do need a cybernetic score in order to warp in Stalkers. But luckily here for Showtime, he has already been, well, Chrono boosting out that charge upgrade for a little bit. It's still, it, <laughs> it's still surprisingly close. But I don't think there is really a way out of this match here for Night Phoenix. Now that those Immortals are here, uh, they are so powerful. Yeah, not to mention the fact that Showtime got that plus one, uh, sh plus one weapons. Yeah, he goes plus two as well. Yeah, yeah. this is a misery for sure here, but I think it's still totally fine. Oh, it's it's so funny because it is, and it, it is absolutely a mystery. There's no way it's not, but it is like not gonna matter because he just he played such a clean early game and yeah. dealt with the first wave so well that it's just seventy four probes. <laughs> Yeah, no. Night Phoenix is going to have to transfer pros from the main base, too. 
Uh, I think Showtime at this point realizes, wait a second, I can actually chase this down easy peasy. He does yeah. have a prism too, so I'm assuming he will just keep going. He even has a little location over here to warp in across the minerals. Very cute. Very cute. But uh, if you got that prism, of course, the fast warp ins are so much better. Showtime is taking a fifth nexus. Just go kill him, man. Just He's, he's dead on his he's feet right now. Blow right on now, him. Okay? Just blow gently in his direction. He will fall over. <laughs> <laughs> my mom always told me I can't play with my food, but Showtime did not get the same message when he was young. It's okay, Showtime. <laughs> He's tiptoeing around him like that army is huge, but he it's 36 army supply for Night Phoenix versus 77 for Showtime. The, th the thing that makes sense, though, with Showtime's movement is if he did think Night Phoenix was on a third base this whole time, it yes. would make sense for him to play very cautiously because you're like, oh, well, my opponent's economy is very good. If I overcommit, you know, I'm going to find myself in trouble. But, of course, that was not the case. And yeah. it led to a, a match that that felt a little bit inevitable towards the last few minutes. But, mm -hmm. honestly, I can't fault Showtime for playing safe there. Like, it's... No. It's really nah, it's so easy to give away an advantage too, right? Especially in a mirror matchup. And I think it was just a little misread, but he ultimately uh, yeah, played so well that it didn't even really matter that there was an entire, like, you know, 1,000 minerals that wasn't accounted for yeah. caught up there. And uh, he yeah, he was still A-OK. -okay. Uh, Night Phoenix ultimately decided to rip off the Bendate himself because he apparently felt like, okay, that fifth Nexus, that's a pretty clear indicator that I'm not going to be able to win that uh, that game. But... Anyways, well played right there by Showtime. Maybe not a unexpected result for this series so far, but it could have gone very poorly, though, because that is a lot of resources that are caught up in additional bases there for Showtime that really could have backfired, but luckily for him here, it did not. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was... It was very... It was very, like... Showtime-esque in one sense, where you're like... <laughs> he basically won without attacking, right? That's like... <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, he was like... He just... <laughs> and, like, his opponent would, like, run into him, and Showtime would just build a wall. And it would, like... Like, Night Phoenix would, like, bop his head on it. And that happened, like, <laughs> six times until finally Night Phoenix was just too concussed, and he's like, fine, you win. Like, okay, it's over. All right, here we go. Spawning up at the top left. It is aptly named D Mauer for Big It's Showtime. And apparently, an astronaut in the top right hand corner. We have Night Phoenix joining a new team specifically today, I guess, at the start of this tournament. Very cool. Very cool. Honestly, that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of teams actually have been uh, committing to StarCraft 2 as of late, which is awesome to see. Pretty cool to see uh, SC2 still alive and well in 2024. I think you and me are also pretty happy about that. <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> I would say we are quite pleased with the lack of deadness of StarCraft 2. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, this, this, I feel like every, anyone who is still into the game at this point has such a like love-hate relationship with it where it's it's still more love than hate but there's always those days where you're like ah oh, dt's lurkers widow mines <laughs> but having it be alive so long and mm -hmm. having it like continue to just bring such a such a sisyphusian that's, I don't think that's a word, but like the boulder up the yeah, hill, you it. know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nothing, nothing hits like StarCraft. It's kind of funny too, actually, because I think as far as esports goes, StarCraft is kind of in a unique position in the sense that I feel like there are a lot of people that much prefer watching the game over mm. playing the game. And you would rarely see that with other esports where I, I've, I feel like at least, like I don't have the, the stats to prove this, but I've got a feeling that the vast majority of people, for example, that like to watch Dota, also play Dota, right? And the same mm. for like League of Legends and the other big esports out there. But with StarCraft 2, I mean, sure, there's a lot of people that love to play. You can still find games within seconds of queuing on the ladder. 
But I think the vast majority of people have played the game at some point and then realized, okay, I understand this is super difficult. Now I'm going to enjoy watching other people play it instead because <laughs> that is far less stressful. And it's, it's kind of a beautiful thing. It reminds me of like traditional sports, right? Like how many mm. people love to watch football or basketball but don't actually actively play it themselves? I would imagine that the vast majority of people that enjoy watching StarCraft in 2024 will continue enjoying the game, right? Like they were, yeah. they've probably been watching for many years and I don't really see them going anywhere. So shout out to the people watching. It's been uh, only really possible because of you guys. And uh, much like the, you know, sports fans at home who are uh, in their like 40s and 50s and, and you know, out of shape, and uh, not able to to play at a high level anymore. They're just like screaming at the TV. Why'd you fumble the ball, you bum? As yeah. like, <laughs> as a player, I, I, it's me. I'm talking about me, of course. There's there's some backseat sporting going on. Yeah, exactly, for sure. exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it's a unique thing, but that's that's the beauty of it and the joy of it too. Uh, we are gonna be seeing a four gate blink all in this time from Night Phoenix. Yep. Obviously, it didn't. That wasn't what he ended up going for in the previous game. Oh, oh, look at that. Showtime was uh, switching yeah. targets on those sentries to try and get them shooting the shields as much as possible. Oh, I was just going to say force fields would be oh. so good right there. And that is a great set. But, oh, oh that warping warp as well. Oh. Body blocks it. Oh, that was really well handled right there by Showtime. <laughs> oh. Oh, and that is such a bad start here for Night Phoenix. So last game he went for an extended two base all in with Blink Stalkers. Now we're gonna go for a, I guess a one base all in with Blink Stalkers. But that first engagement is absolutely pivotal. Losing two Stalkers for one Stalker is, yeah, the exact opposite of what you're looking for. No kidding. That is a, that is a brutal situation. And Showtime already has an Immortal about to pop out. The Immortal is going to be out by the time Blink completes. Like, this is cool. such a good situation for Showtime. He is managing this setup perfectly. Night Phoenix is going to be able to move forward. We'll be able to snipe down a couple of Stalkers. But, uh, I mean, that's, that's a good first showing of Blink. But now the Immortal's out. And Battery yeah. Overcharge is, of course, going to be available as well. I do like probes being pulled. That's actually really smart right here from Showtime. Yep. They're focusing uh, their fire on whatever they can hit, right? And oh, here we go. Aggressive blink forward. He really wants to get that immortal and he does get it in the end, but that's oh. very costly. Great force fields as well, because of course Showtime knows that that blink is going to be on cooldown. Another immortal just popped out of the robo facility. And even though Night Phoenix is trying to pull a rabbit out of a hat, now he's suddenly... Turns out he was immortal after all. He suddenly finds himself against another one of those bad boys. Yeah, this looks just fantastic right now for Showtime. We are going to see four Adepts were warped in here. And that will make things a little complicated. Oh, I actually really like that probe pull. It is going to be... Well, he's got to get back to work. That's actually really well done right here by Night Phoenix. That's just really lowering the advantage right here that, that Showtime has had economically. Yes, but it will come at the... Oh, oh, okay. That is a really cool move. Showtime, though, was paying attention and will still be able to pull his army back and get on top of this very quickly. Night Phoenix? Yeah, the thing is, all that did was, like, bring the worker counts closer and it cost him a full warp in to do so. It was a good move, but Showtime checked it well enough, I think, to still be just fine. Yeah, no, absolutely. It kind of feels like it delays the inevitable a little bit, right? Exactly, like Showtime exactly. Showtime obviously should have, should have just not had those Adepts in the main base in the first place. And even though Night Phoenix did do a lot of damage, it's not necessarily going to make this game any easier. Once again, we go up to two Immortals here, and they're going to be exactly what he needs against this type of army. Three shield batteries right now on the low ground. As Night Phoenix, can you expand behind this? Not really. Oh, well, Immortal actually joining in from the high ground. That's kind of cute. Oh, <laughs> I didn't think about that. I was like, man, why is he not bringing that Immortal to the low ground? But yeah, that's a that's a clever, clever thing right there. We're going to see Battery Overcharge pop. Not able to keep that Immortal alive. Or actually, I think, yes, that was the end of Battery Overcharge. Uh, but Showtime, I mean, as long as he's not getting overwhelmed, he is still winning this game. And with each passing moment, the main base of Night Phoenix comes closer and closer to being mined out. And this all-in will run out of steam. We're, what are we at for the minerals? Yeah. Like, 
yeah, it, it's it, eight thirty is usually when you get uh, those first four mineral patches mined out. Mm -hmm. So this would be the moment if the previous game was any indicator that Showtime is going to take a third, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> there were a couple too many expansions in the previous game. But not quite the case here, I don't think. He, he must be reading this one correctly. There's really no way to misread this one. Yeah, the previous I, one was a bit trickier, but yeah, no, he is, he's starting to overwhelm this. A third immortal just popped out? No, actually, that's just started up. I thought for a second we had a third one already available, but look at those. Those two in the front, they're gonna just do so much damage. Aggressive link forward, okay, does get one, but it comes at the cost of a whole load of stalkers. Kind of yeah. plate yourself into a corner here. Oh, and he is actually going to do exactly that, which will allow Showtime to take down a lot of those units. Immortal falls, but now there's more Stalkers for Showtime than for Night Phoenix. And he will make a fantastic defense. 